Hey everyone, Joe Camacho with Target Specialty Products here, hoping this video finds you, your family, and your team all doing well. I'm here today with my fourth video in a series of videos dedicated to reviewing mosquito larvicides, their modes of action, along with which formulations are available from Target Specialty Products. In this video series, I'm reviewing bio-rational larvicides or biopesticides, insect growth regulators, and finally, I'll review mineral oils. And I thought we should continue discussing the insect growth regulator Pyroproxifen. So stay tuned and we'll jump right into it. Welcome back. Let's continue with the IGR Pyroproxifen. Like the previous IGR we spoke about in the third video, Pyroproxifen is a juvenile hormone mimic and as such prevents immature mosquitoes from emerging as adult mosquitoes. So to briefly review, molting and metamorphosis in insects such as mosquitoes are under the control of two hormones, juvenile hormone and another hormone called ectosone. In the absence of juvenile hormone, ectosone causes a switching in the gene expression of the insect, changing the form from larvae to pupae to an adult. Artificially high levels of the juvenile hormone mimic must be present as the fourth instar begins to metamorphosize from larvae to pupae in order to create adult emergence inhibition. If the concentration of juvenile hormone is not at the correct level, metamorphosis will continue and emergence of the adult mosquito will happen. If you missed the third video where I go into detail on how IGRs work, take a look at the video here by clicking the above link. One of the most exciting aspects of pyroproxifen is its ability to horizontally transfer or auto-disseminate. This is most particularly interesting in container-inhabiting mosquitoes, such as Aedes aegypti and Aedes albopictus, mainly due to their skip oviposition behavior. The gravid female will visit multiple larval habitats where she can transfer the chemical from one location to another. This control method has the potential to be effective and sustainable because it's based on the biology and oviposition behavior of the mosquito. See, if we can treat the daytime resting sites where the female mosquito finds shelter for the extreme conditions of the environment and expose her to pyroproxifen, she will transfer or disseminate the pyroproxifen to larval habitat when it's time for her to lay her eggs, thus increasing chemical dispersal. Many studies have been conducted to evaluate the effectiveness of horizontal transfer or auto-dissemination. Let's look at one here. In this study out of Peru, gravid female mosquitoes were exposed to vegetation treated with pyroproxifen for various durations of time, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, and 120 minutes. The exposed females were then given access to ovicups with developing larvae in them. The larvae were allowed to develop to calculate successful emergence. In the best case scenario, only 8% of the larvae successfully emerged as adult mosquitoes. That's a 92% adult emergence inhibition. And in the worst case scenario, 22% of the larvae successfully emerged as adults, or a 78% adult emergence inhibition. That's still a really good job of controlling the emergence of larvae from sources that were not treated. In the second part of the study, the authors looked at what exposure of pyroproxifen does to the viability of her eggs. Following the same protocol of, of exposing gravid female mosquitoes to vegetation treated with pyroproxifen for various durations of time, the gravid female mosquitoes were allowed to deposit her eggs. Those eggs were then given the opportunity to hatch. Again, only 11% of the eggs of female mosquitoes that was exposed to pyroproxifen successfully hatched. And in the worst case scenario, 31% successfully hatched. That means almost 70% of her eggs were not viable. So now your question might be, how far can she transfer it? Well, one study showed auto-dissemination of pyroproxifen from treated sites to untreated sentinel oviposition sites, all under field conditions in area-wide and point source treatment experiments, that the mosquito delivered pyroproxifen up to 200 meters away. 
That is over 650 feet, more than two football fields. Currently, Target Specialty Products offers pure proxifen in a couple of ways. For backyard barrier treatment type sprays, what I like to refer to as backyard residual sprays, where we're not targeting larval development sites, but rather the daytime resting sites for the mosquito, we have Nygard IGR Concentrate. With Nygard IGR Concentrate, we're expecting the female mosquito to horizontally transfer or auto-disseminate the pure proxifen to the larval site for us. There is a case, however, for using Nygard IGR in larval development sites, as long as they're not a natural water source, such as a cemetery base. One district in California has been applying Nygard IGR in the liquid form because it's easy to apply into cemetery bases, and they've been getting very good results. For treating larval developmental sites, we have the relatively new product Sumilar 0.5G, first introduced to the U.S. market in, the, in late 2018. It wasn't really until 2019 that we saw the great benefits of PR Proxifen. Sumilar 0.5G is a lightweight sand granular formulation that can be used in wide area larvicide. Again, currently not for use in natural water bodies, it is available for use in such sites as ornamental ponds, fountains, abandoned swimming pools, septic tanks, flooded basements, animal waste lagoons, tire piles, tree holes, rain barrels, flower pots, and as you can imagine, a few other sites. We've seen some very promising results for uses in animal waste lagoons like dairy sumps, and even better, more promising results for stormwater catch basins. So there you have it, the IGR Pure Proxifen. What it is, how it works, and where to use it. If you have any questions about the Sumilarv or Nygard product line, do not hesitate to reach out to me via phone or email. Next time, we'll go over the mineral oils. And until then, thanks and make it a great day.